The best way to describe February for us has just been a lot on our plate. We felt a little bit stressed and a little bit tired and a little bit overwhelmed. It's been one of those seasons where you just know you're operating in weakness, but through that, God is strong. We have seen him move tremendously. There's just no way we could have done everything that we've done and pulled off everything on our schedules and calendars that we did. It was just very apparent to us that God was with us and uh, that he was definitely moving through us. And I made a joke this morning with some friends at the gym. I said, you know, the uh, footprints in the sand, you know, example, we have two sets of footprints and, but then there was only one set and the person's like, but God, where were you when things got really hard? And God said, well, I was carrying you. And uh, I said, you know, I'm going to rename that instead of footprints, it's going to be the drag. Uh, because there were two sets of footprints, and then all of a sudden, all you see is like a dead body being dragged. And what that is, was that was me this month clinging to Jesus' ankles, and he's just pulling me along to our destination. And so that's all I knew how to do, was just abide in him, hold on to him, and go where he wanted me to go. And then he was always faithful and always gracious to speak through me and to do whatever needed to be done. So with that, if you only listen to the first part of this uh, update, I'd say you need to know about what happened in Canada. I brought two of my close buddies with me. These are two guys I've been discipling for quite a while and uh, for a couple years. And uh, one of them was just ordained. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to give them a chance to preach in a bigger setting, and I wanted to spend that time with them. And, and so I just really felt the Lord saying, bring these two guys with you and spend time with them and give them a chance to preach, and, um, and then big things are going to happen. And so it also helped me because we have four sessions to preach. So if I was by myself, I would, would have had to have preached on uh, Friday night and Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And so I ended up preaching on Friday night and Saturday night, and Gavin Norris preached on Saturday morning, and Nathan Kemble preached on Sunday morning. So it was super helpful to me. The first night, we uh, gave a gospel presentation that nothing else satisfies but Jesus. Anything this world has to offer is subpar. You'll always end up empty. Uh, it's only God that satisfies us. And we ended up having over 50 students stand up. I didn't make them just raise their hand. I said, you need to stand up before your peers and before your leaders, and you need to proclaim that you are choosing to follow Jesus and to give your life to him tonight. And we had over 50 students stand up that night. It was absolutely beautiful. And then the next morning, Gavin led a bunch of people to the altar, faces on the carpet, just crying out to God and seeking him. It was absolutely beautiful. And then Saturday night, I kind of shifted gears. I, I preached on the holiness of God, but towards the end, I really felt like the Lord was saying, there's more kids that didn't give their life to me. And so I gave another invitation, and I awkwardly stood up there for I don't know how long, five minutes, whatever, and I said, there are more, there are more, stand up. And we, we had at least another 10 to 12 students stand up. And it wasn't until the very end that this young lady that I had been speaking to and pouring into and praying for ended up standing up too. It was absolutely beautiful. And then Sunday morning, Nathan uh, Kemble had over 300 people stand up and commit to seeking God daily in the Word and in prayer. And it was just absolutely beautiful. So I had to share that with you. If that's the only thing you hear on this update, you needed to hear that. We give all glory to God. He's the only one that can lead a person to a place of conviction. He's the only one that can encounter a person to the point where they say, yeah, God is holy, I am not, I need a savior, and I need one now, and his name is Jesus. That is a supernatural moment. And, um, and so you can't manufacture that. You, you, you deliver the gospel, you're faithful to preach the word, you give the invitation but that is God who moves in people's hearts. We can't take any credit. All we did was go there and obey the Lord and preach his word and beautiful things happen. So praise God and celebrate with me. That's always exciting. 
The next thing is uh, the Alabama ordination. I mentioned it a minute ago. So I've been pouring into Nathan Kemble. He's literally, I feel like he's one of my very best friends. And But he's also a young man that's called the ministry. And I was there when God called him to ministry. In fact, I kind of started putting the seed in his head. And, um, and he was just ordained. So I had the privilege of voting uh, at his ordination, signing his ordination paper, and then delivering the charge, which is a sermon to the congregation and to him. This is your charge. This is what God is calling you to do. So what God is calling you to be, I also charged the congregation and the deacons and the elders, and it was just a beautiful moment. Um, and so really my favorite part of the whole thing was towards the end where I got to hug this guy and say, all right, it's time. It is official. You are Pastor Nathan Kimball. It was just a super sweet moment and uh, one that I always cherish for the rest of my life. Just so uh, proud of him. I'm so excited. He is a kid magnet. But more than anything, he really, truly loves Jesus. And he really has a profound understanding of the word and an ability to communicate that to kids. And uh, he's a soul winner. So I just believe at First Baptist Church in Gouin, Alabama, that that town and the surrounding towns and that church are going to experience tremendous fruit because of what God will do through Nathan and ministry. Uh, next, I had an opportunity to preach on godly biblical fatherhood at Golden Central Baptist Church in Golden, Mississippi, my friend Jared Grimes, Pastor Jared Grimes Church. And uh, it was just a, a huge privilege. But how do you do that in a 45-minute sermon? I didn't. I took about an hour, and I probably could have taken five. It was a room full of men that stood up and said, yes, I am committed to repenting um, about how I've been fathering and committing to stepping up and being more of a godly father and seeking Abba Father because he's our perfect model for what a daddy looks like. Uh, next, I was able to speak at uh, a place called Restoration Ranch here in the Shoals area. It's in Tuscumbia, Alabama. It's a Christian recovery camp for individuals battling mental illness and drug addiction and addictions of any kind, really. And it was just a sweet time. In fact, it was one of my favorite times I've had preaching in a long time. I had very little time to prepare I showed up with a little bit of an idea what I felt God wanted me to talk about. And I honestly showed up just sort of like, all right, Lord, what do you want me to do here? And they were so broken and hungry for the Lord. And they'd been through so much. Uh, it was like a room full of Mary Magdalene's and, and folks that just have, have been through some serious stuff, which I could relate to. And uh, God delivered a beautiful message about Abba, the Abba Father heart, the heart of God. And, and what he really is like as a father and what he really wants for us. And uh, it was just a super beautiful time. Enjoyed every second of it. I just love that ministry to pieces. In fact, I'm praying about how God would have me further partner with that ministry. Um, next, things to celebrate, um, movie making. <laughs> Who would have ever thought God would have me make a film? Uh, but we're about to travel this weekend to Georgia the Kendricks brothers are putting on a film festival called the Christian Worldview Film Festival. And uh, we'll be attending that uh, because we have been selected as uh, a finalist for, I guess, the best feature documentary uh, of the year. So uh, not something we expected, not something that, you know, is, is something that we want to brag or boast about. It's just to say that this is what God continues to do with that film. It's just very special. In fact, it's it's on Redeem TV now, and uh, we're close to getting our 52-week video curriculum done. Uh, we'll be working with Men's Ministry International. We'll be onboarding the uh, Free Methodist denomination. There's just so much still going on uh, because of what God is doing through that film, and so we give him the credit for it. Um, if any kind of award is received, um, which is possible, it's his name that deserves to be in that slot, not our names. Uh, all we did was listen and obey. He's the one that's blessed it and, and brought all the pieces together. Uh, but it was worth mentioning so you all know what's going on. And we get to be around a whole bunch of filmmakers in the Christian film industry that are teaching lessons and uh, giving trade secrets and just kind of sharing how things work. So we get to grow, which is going to help us on our new film, uh, Show Me Your Glory. Um, so things to pray for. Show me your glory. Continue to pray for that. You guys, one of the reasons I know that the gospel will be shared and an invitation given to millions of people around the world through this film 
is because of the amount of spiritual warfare that's taking place, the circumstances that are happening. Like, this is all out war, and it's been crazy and very hard, but very good. And so I don't want to give away too many details or talk too long about it, but just know that it's fantastic. It is going to be incredible because God is in it. He's moving in it. And uh, I cannot wait to show this thing to you guys when it uh, is ready to be released. It's going to be just, it's going to be tremendous. I'm so excited. Um, With that, please pray for protection. Pray for provision, please. Uh, Pray specifically, we're going to submit a torch video to Angel Studios soon, and we're going to ask them to partner with us. We believe they will, uh, but we'll see. That's going to be something God has to do. And if that's the case, it's going to just open up tremendous doors for getting this thing into the theater and for funding it and all the other things that are needed. And so please just pray for that, um, the submission of that video, the completion of that video, and for the hearts of the Angel Studios Guild to vote yes, that we want to see this thing completed. That would be great. Um, As always, I want to talk about Walkabouts 2024. Again, all the weeks are booked. And again, God is filling up the whole summer. It's just incredible. And uh, we're also doing really well on the fundraising side. We still have some to fund, uh, but God is just moving tremendously. So I wanted to tell you, continue to pray for that. At this point, let's really pray for safety, Pray for uh, fire season to not be really bad this year so we can do what we're doing, and for many other reasons. And please pray for the hearts of the attendees, both students and mentors. Pray for deep bonds between students and mentors, that they would just really click, that that discipleship relationship would continue on for years to come. And uh, just pray that God moves in a big way. Again, 97% of those campers give their life to Jesus on walkabout. And 22% of those kids come back as leaders. Be praying that those numbers continue this next year. We will never take those numbers for granted because those numbers are just the fruit of God's movement. We do what we do because we're obedient and because we love it and because God has asked us to. But ultimately, it is God who bears the fruit. It's our job just to abide. So pray for God to move again this year like he did last. Uh, Next is my uh, doctorate. Please continue to pray for me. It's going really well. I'm starting to to think about quitting, not every day, but maybe like every other day or every third day. I'm starting to enjoy it uh, morbidly, uh, reading and writing nonstop. But pray for perseverance and specifically pray for clear direction about my dissertation. I don't want to just do a dissertation and and check the box. That would be a, a shame. That would be a waste. Please pray that God would direct my steps, that I would know what to do it on, and that it would be something that would bear fruit, and it would be something awesome and something I love. And uh, last but not least, actually, I've got two more things. Uh, The 52-week curriculum, continue to pray for that. It's almost done. It's fantastic. I've looked at the first 20 episodes. Uh, It's just the quality of it is absolutely beautiful. It's going to touch a lot of churches. And again, what that is essentially, are those that are committing to be a part of ending the fatherless epidemic. Those that have watched the film, churches around the country, ministries around the country, they're committing. We're directing them back to the Word of God. That is where they're going to start. So yes, we want them to go serve the fatherless. Yes, we want them to do these things, but but we're going to start with the Word of God. And so this is a 52-week curriculum to bring them to the Word of God so they can get the heart of God, so they can go be the hands and feet of God. Uh, That's the idea. And then last, for real this time, is just prayer for my kids, Mason and Mackenzie. They're getting old quickly. Uh, There's a picture that just cracks me up. They had, uh, for 100 days of school, they all dressed up like the elderly, what they think the elderly looks like, which is so cute. But, But really, all that aside, they are growing so fast, and we are so busy, and we don't want to miss a moment. Somehow I'm trying to get to my daughter's gymnastics every Wednesday and trying to do all these things and and bond and connect with them. But what I'm noticing is that because we're in ministry, these kids get attacked so much from the enemy. Uh, He affects their sleep, um, literally through bad dreams and uh, through illness and through just so many things. We can just see a lot of times if the enemy can't get to me, he tries my wife. If he can't get to my wife, he tries to get to my kids. And lately, he's really been getting to Mason. If you could just really pray for Mason, that God would give him a heart of obedience, 
Pray against the spirit of rebellion. Pray for our patience. Pray for God to just really move in his heart. And pray that God would continue to move in Mackenzie's heart because she is a seven-year-old that's going on 15 in terms of her maturity in Christ. It's pretty incredible. Uh, So that's it. That's what I got. And, And as always, I would be remiss to not stare into the camera. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about so many people. I'm thinking specific people in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, in Houston, Texas, uh, in the Shoals area, and people around the country. I'm thinking of specific people right now, and I just want to tell you, I love you, and I'm so thankful for you. Uh, those of you when I text, like, please pray right now, and your faithfulness to pray, and, and those that I don't even need to text because I know that they're praying, those that send me encouraging things all the time, like, keep going, run the race, and they're spurring me on, and those of you that <clears throat> are faithful to give, and to support our ministry, I will never, ever, ever take it for granted. Thank you from the deepest depths of my heart for every single penny that God asks you to give and you're faithful to obey and give. It is for his glory. It is for his kingdom to be built. So much of what is given goes directly to ministry. It is over 90%. It's 91 point something percent. And uh, we are stewarding that money faithfully Um, And we want to tell you that because it's important. And we want to tell you that that money in this ministry is bearing much fruit. It is an investment that is reaping eternal dividends for trillions of years to come. And we could not thank you enough for it. You're just as much a part of this team as anyone else. Uh, We all are different body parts of the same beautiful body working together to accomplish what God would want us to accomplish. So thank you. I love you. I miss you. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. All right, bye-bye.